So new controversy, Michigan now the 24th right to work state in the U.S. A Democratic state representative speaking on the state house floor warning that violence will come as a result of this. We're going to pass something that will undo a hundred years of labor relations and there will be blood. There will be repercussions. Well, he was right about that because outside literally there was blood. Things sure did get ugly when protesters start to tear down a, a tent put up by a pro-right-to-work group called Americans for Prosperity. According to reports, the writer and Fox News contributor Stephen Crowder argued with them and then was repeatedly punched in the face, threatened, and had a chipped tooth. Michigan State Center, Tanya Shootmaker is with me live, and good morning to you. Good morning. What do you make of this reaction so far? There well, will be blood. I think that's just an unfortunate metaphor and you know I certainly I find that language very insightful. Uh, we outside the Capitol had a Lansing landmark his name's Clint and he owns a small business it's a hot dog stand and they just totally uh, also decimated his business totally ripped apart his hot dog stand and then also as you see, saw the pictures of the tent. Well, we'll see whether or not more of this continues today. But, I mean, yesterday, really, it was national headlines. But here's what the president says about this new law. They say they call them right-to-work laws. He says they don't have anything to do with economics. It's all about politics. He continues. What they're really talking about is they're giving you the right to work for less money. What do you think Actually, about that? I, I think that's just totally inaccurate. First of all, this does not affect collective bargaining rights at all. This is all about workers' choice and worker freedom. 17% of Michigan's workforce is unionized today. After this law is, is signed, 17% of Michigan workers will be unionized, and the key is if they decide to join the union. This is all about freedom of choice and worker empowerment. So um, what, what you are saying, then, I want to be clear on this. The law only says that if you're a non-union employee, you no longer have to give money to support financially the union. That, is that's that what it exact, says? That's exactly correct. They have the freedom to choose whether or not to belong to a union. If they find value in their union, they are free to choose to do that. If they do not find value in that uh, union, they, they are likewise not allowed to, as a condition of employment, have to belong to a union. How many years has this previous law been on the books? It's been on since I... I in. Years. I mean, 1960s, 1950s. You know, I don't know the exact law, but uh, I, ever since I've been alive, it's been on the books. Okay. The reason I ask that is because you know what happened in Wisconsin. They did something similar. They were successful. Indiana, same story. Ohio, not so much. They went the same route that Michigan did. Then a year later, it was put on the ballot as a referendum, and it was thrown out. Will this meet the same fate? You know, I sure hope not. I sure hope that Michigan comes together after this and realizes that we're all in this, and it's all about jobs and being competitive, not only with the world, but also our neighboring states. Indiana did a law, a right-to-work law, a couple of uh, months ago, about a year ago, and uh, they found that 74 new projects have been put on the books as a result because they have a great working environment uh, and that's fertile to create jobs. Well, what I'm reading here is that there, this is considered an appropriations bill in Michigan, and by law you cannot challenge that in a referendum. We'll see whether or not that's the case based on what the judges say. But today, what can you say about the future economy for Michigan? if this law stands. I think Michigan's economy, that brighter days are ahead. I think this is a step in the right direction for jobs. I think it makes a, uh, an open sign for M Michigan businesses um, and then also those businesses that want to look to locate Michigan. We're the automobile manufacturer of the world and we need to have an open sign on that. I think this is also a step that we will not take workers' rights for granted, that it's all about worker empowerment and worker choice. Right, it's an economic earthquake in Michigan. Tanya Shootmaker, thank you for your time. Thank you very much.